Hello and welcome to Mr TripAdvisor. Well, today we're doing something a bit different. We're going back in time um, uh, to Pizzo in Italy in the summer of 2013 when Trace and I were just having our first stab at doing bits and pieces of urban exploring. And this one we came upon by accident. We were on holiday here. We were walking along a very deserted beach and then went inwards in some woods and found this incredible abandoned building. Um, I know from some of the comments that I've been sent before that it's since been demolished. Locals always said uh, at the hotel, I said people just don't go in there, it's too scary, it has bad links, which um, I read to mean mafia or something like that, something equally distasteful, but someone had bust in there. So curiosity got the better of us. And uh, you can join us now and see what we saw. So this is a really big complex. It has a road going in each side. This area here was part of the security. So um, a little office and was looked like it was an area that was used to vet who was coming and out, that sort of stuff. Um, it was very hot here, very, very hot. And uh, you had the sounds of all the insects and bugs all around um, we went into this uh, building um, I think it had again a lot of security multiple doors and latches um, grates on it and inside um, at this time it was full of CD boxes and boxes of CD cases or they might have been CD ROMs DVDs there was a lifetime supply of production being made in there so whether this is from when this was abandoned or someone has been using this abandoned building to do um, illicit copying of stuff I don't know but they certainly ran off and left a lot of it there and a lot of it splashed all around the building there's lots of odd things here there's um, uh, what's that? a wheelbarrow and stuff there this is a quite a solid footed tarmac area that's just got overgrown. Um, I, I wonder just how long this had been left. I don't. I think it had been abandoned long before whatever was put in that house was there. Some of the stuff definitely had a, a 1960s feel to it. And it's difficult from here to make out just how big this is. This is big, but it was a fortress. There was barbed wire everywhere all sorts of the security features and just around the corner um, didn't capture it in this sweep is a 1960s top of the range really expensive speedboat all made of wood uh, so the sort of thing it says there that James Bond would have had them we've now come back outside and you can see there was a row of trees and then I don't think this looked quite as uh, concrete as it does now there was something pinned on here perhaps this had wooden battening something like that on there to make this look nice I don't know but wherever you went you very quickly realized you were not welcome you know they this was not something that they wanted visitors you can just see the back end of that uh, 1960 speedboat there the, the motor's gone but it was still quite sound. It, it, you could sit in it and rock it. it. It looked to me like it would still float, you know. And has that been there about forty or fifty years? Amazing, you know. I wish I'd gone and spent a bit more time in it, really. But we were a long way, a long way from anywhere, a long way from anybody, and we weren't really prepared. We were just in our beach gear and say we walking along the front. So again, here you've got a netting covering barbed wire. Um, it's all still sharp there was another layer of defences at the bottom of here which uh, I think we'll see in a mo. but there was a lot of broken bottles have been fixed into the concrete so if he did try and straddle or get over this and I don't know why he would I, I have a feeling there was a lot of particularly tough people in here that's the other gate entrance that is connected with a little bit of a tarmac road that seems to go nowhere now so you could basically drive in and out at each end of this estate and it had its own road that went through there. Here you can see some of this glass, um, and I say glass, barbed wire, really thick concrete. 
people did not want you going in here in its day, whatever it was doing, they wanted privacy. And this amazing remote location as well to have just built this. I don't know how you got to it. Such a shame, isn't it? That's just now been demolished. I mean, you know, it could have been turned into something, I'm sure. How do buildings like this just get left for decade after decade and not get reused? So we're walking around now to the front of that other gate you saw. Now this one's just completely intact. Um, there is a very solid road. It's not been used for a while. But it is, yeah, it is a sort of a tarmac road. And it ran right the way through the property to the original gate where we walked in from. You can see the sort of the front of the house there. And on, on the deck there you can see um, some a CD and the place is littered with CDs and bits of CDs. I don't know, that doesn't seem to fit, does it, with the age of the speedboat? I, I suspect that it, the pirating bit of this has been done when this building had already been abandoned quite a long time. There were loads of tyres everywhere. I don't know the significance of that, whether they're just abandoned. This is the intercom. We'll have a little look. Anybody home? Hello? Hello? Anyone home? But no. And I, I, These are powered gates, so they would have been open remotely in the day. So all in all, a truly amazing place. It's a shame it's not there. I wish I'd done even more filming was there, but I thought you might like to see this very urban, very early urban exploring. So anyway, so please like, share and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time on uh, Mr. TripAdvisor. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you from Mr. Seagull.